welcome to the February 28th, 2023 joint meeting of the Eugene City Council and Lane County Board of Commissioners. Thank you all for joining us. <clears throat> and with that, I now call the meeting of the Eugene City Council to order. Good evening, Mayor Venice and everyone else. I'd like to call the uh, February 28th Board of County Commissioners meeting to order. And just a brief uh, word for the commissioners. Uh, this is a City of Eugene called meeting. You'll see some protocols a little bit different to the way we normally do things in Harris Hall and with uh, County Commission meetings. For instance, you will see when uh, uh, public testimony is delivered, cameras will be turned on by the person delivering the testimony, not a practice that we uh, typically adhere to. And this evening, um, Mr. McRicey will not be with us. Uh, Mr. Hurley, Director Hurley, is here. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us in this remote meeting format. Anyone wishing to access the meeting can do so by watching the live stream available on our website, the broadcast on Comcast Channel 21, or by following the access instructions listed for this meeting on the City of Eugene Public Webcast and Meeting Materials web page. If you join the meeting via computer, device, or or phone, your microphone, webcam, and phone are automatically muted when you enter the meeting as an attendee. There is one public hearing on tonight's agenda. Please note that members of the public who sign up to testify may speak only on the topic that is the subject of the stated hearing. For those wishing to testify during the public hearing, please fill out a request to speak form available on the city's public webcast and meeting materials web page if you haven't already done so. These requests to speak forms will be used to generate the order of the speakers and correctly enter speakers' names into the public record. We'll accept requests to speak forms until 6.05. Raised hands in Zoom will not be added to the queue for speaking. You must use this sign-up form if you wish to speak. For those joining the meeting on a phone who are unable to complete the request to speak form online, Press star nine and the last three digits of your phone number will be added to the speaker's queue. When the hearing begins, our meeting moderator will announce two speakers' names at a time. When it is your turn, the moderator will announce your name and promote you to panelist. You will have three minutes to speak. The City of Eugene is considering an ordinance establishing urban reserves for the City of Eugene amending the Eugene Springfield Metropolitan General Plan, amending the Envision Eugene Comprehensive Plan, amending the Public Facilities and Services Plan, and providing an effective date. And Chair Four, would you like to read the county mm -hmm. ordinance? Thank you, Mayor Venice. But tonight's the second reading for Lane County Ordinance PA 1388 in the matter of adopting an ordinance establishing urban reserves for the city of Eugene, amending the Eugene Springfield Metropolitan Area General Plan, amending the Lane County Rural Comprehensive Plan, amending the Envision Eugene Comprehensive Plan, amending Public Facilities and Services Plan. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Rebecca, would you please uh, introduce the top, the subject? Thank you, Mayor Venice, and good evening, commissioners and city councilors. I'm Rebecca Gershow, Senior Planner with City of Eugene Planning Division. Tonight, the City of Eugene and Lane County are holding a joint public hearing to consider the establishment of urban reserves for the city of Eugene. The urban reserves proposal we're discussing tonight responds to the county board and city council direction given by motions passed in 2020. It would apply the urban reserve status to specific land outside of the Eugene urban growth boundary so that future expansions of the urban growth boundary are more predictable and efficient. We're conducting this hearing jointly with the city council and the board of commissioners because this is a joint project between the city and the county. The order of proceedings for this hearing will be public testimony and then any additional comments by staff. Thank you. Uh, good evening, commissioners and city councilors. Uh, I am Lindsay Eichner. I'm a principal planner with Lane County. I wanted to know for the public that we held individual work sessions with the board and city councilor early this month, earlier this month to review the urban reserves proposal. Uh, those work sessions were held on February 7th and February 15th. In addition to the packet materials for this evening, staff emailed out written public comment to the board and city council on Friday of last week, and then an additional batch 
uh, earlier today that included comments up until 4 p.m. today. And uh, we will continue to forward on any written comments that were received after four o'clock um, as well. Uh, these comments can be found on the project website uh, for the board. Um, at the conclusion of the public hearing, county staff support a motion to approve the second reading and set a third reading and deliberations on April 11th, 2023 at 1.30 p.m. Thank you. Hey, thank you. We'll begin our consideration of Eugene Urban Reserves by opening the public hearing. I now open the public hearing on behalf of the Eugene City Council. And at this time, I invite the chairperson, Chair Farr, uh, for the Lane County Board of Commissioners to open their hearing. I now open the public hearing for the Board of Commissioners. Participants are encouraged to raise issues or concerns with sufficient specificity to enable the county to address or respond to them prior to the board's deliberation. I will now call for disclosure of board commissioners' abstentions due to conflict of interests or biases. Uh, in order, uh, I guess I'll call the role of the board uh, as I see them. Uh, Commissioner Buck? None. Commissioner Senega? Uh, Commissioner yep. Senega, do you have any uh, uh, abstentions due to, do you need to declare abstention due to conflict of interest or biases? Nope. Uh, Commissioner Laval? No, sir, no abstentions. Vice Chair Trigger. No conflict. Are there any challenges to the board's qualifications to hear? I'm looking around and I see none, Mayor Venice. If you have signed up to speak via Zoom, please take this time to ensure that your screen name in Zoom includes your last name and matches the name you used to sign up to speak. Because these are legislative amendments, speakers will be called in the order in which they signed up to speak. I will announce two speakers' names at a time. If you are the next speaker, I will promote you to panelist status. And when it is your turn to speak, you can unmute and turn on your camera if you wish. At the beginning of your testimony, please state your name clearly. And for Eugene residents, your ward, if known, you will have three minutes to speak. If you are watching the meeting, the timer should be visible. A yellow light will come on when you have 15 seconds to complete your comments. The red light indicates the end of the three minutes. For those who have connected to the meeting via phone and don't have the benefit of seeing the timer, please be aware that your microphone will be muted at the three minute mark. Testimony presented at this public hearing should be directed toward the applicable approval criteria or other criteria that the speaker believes apply to the decision. Please note that screen sharing or displaying information on the screen is not allowed and any misuse of the platform or violation of the council's code of conduct will result in immediate termination of speaking privilege. Our sp first speaker this evening will be Sue Pritchard followed by Howard Saxon. Sue, I'm promoting you to panelist. It'll take just a moment. Hello, thank you very much. My name is Sue Pritchard and I served on the, I'm in Ward 3, I'm sorry, Ward 3. I served on the Infill Compatibility Standards Task Team also on the Envision Eugene Technical Resource Group, and I'm currently on the ETAC since the beginning. It has been an honor to be involved. As you know, this is a very complicated process. Um, thinking ahead 27 to 30 years is not easy, and we may well be wrong in a number of ways. Connecting with all of the Metro plans and the Lane County Rural Comprehensive Plan and the EE comprehensive plan as well as the public facilities and services plan makes it even more complicated. The amount of information needed before making any recommendations is nothing short of astonishing. It was necessary first to define the study area, which was actually in looking back the most simple part of it. Then there was a need to develop a land need model, which was loaded with all kinds of assumptions um, over which many of them could be wrong and we could be argued for hours. 
And then there was a need for a land supply model, which was even more complicated. And then finally, a suitability analysis. And we had a lot of discussion about that. The ETAC held 18 monthly meetings over 22 months, months and analyzing each one of those steps. The ETAC was composed of a very diverse group of people, both in and out of the urban growth boundary. We agreed in the end that the urban reserve analysis was technically sound, and we had a preference for the 27 year option preserving class one and class two lands. What I really wanna emphasize is the extent to which the staff created and executed an incredibly robust and transparent public engagement process. It was the most extensive and graciously executed public process I have ever seen in the many years I've been involved. The same positive credit needs to go to the staff for having prepared so well for each one of our meetings and for how thoroughly and clearly they laid out the work plan and how well they managed our time. And as volunteers, we were greatly appreciative of that. So what you're seeing now is a process that was very well done. And it's because of that, that ETAC was united in our recommendations. It's a difficult process, no perfect solution for how we can grow comfortably and wisely. But the thorough process was an exceptional public engagement process and, in, and created a product that can be trusted which is a wonderful thing to be able to say about the work of a city government. And now it is up to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. Next, we will hear from Howard Saxon, followed by Kevin Alltucker. Um, good evening. Uh, my name is Howard Saxon. I reside in Eugene uh, Council Ward 8 and Lane County Commission District 5. I have been a member of ETAC since its inception and served as co-chair during the urban reserve planning process, culminating in recommending the 27-year option. We met 18 times over a 20, 22-month uh, 20 period, spent countless hours individually reviewing uh, the extensive amount of information, and came to a consensus that the 27-year option was the preferred one. I first want to commend the uh, City of Eugene Planning Department staff for their work on the urban reserve process. As you know, having the best, uh, making the best decisions uh, are made uh, when you're able to obtain as much information and data as possible. At the start of the urban reserve planning process, needed information and data were scattered among numerous federal, state, and local government agencies. Much of this information was not in a central database, not always available electronically or in a consistent format. Staff compiled all this information using uh, GIS tools, created mapping that allowed for efficient and comprehensive evaluation for the urban reserve planning process. Their work was really outstanding. Predicting uh, you know, future land use uh, based on uh, projected population and employment levels, especially 20, 30, 40 years out, is difficult at best. Uh, but we know that you know, these current assumptions that are serving as the basis of this uh, recommendation, those assumptions and conditions are going to change over time. And, and the, you know, the urban reserve planning process and will have to probably be uh, changed in the future as we know more. But the most certain part about this process was the suitability analysis. And uh, in that, we looked at environmental and ecological constraints, existing land use, economic criteria, uh, availability of government services, and many other factors. What the 27-year option does, it avoids very important class one and adjacent class two agricultural soils. This is a very, was a very uh, important aspect of the analysis. Uh, we avoid uh, environmentally and ecologically sensitive areas and avoid directing growth in areas that are unsuitable for development due to steep slopes, flood prone areas, and other criteria. I urge you to pass uh, the ordinance uh, uh, in, for establishing the urban reserve for the city, amending the uh, Eugene Springfield Metropolitan Plan, amending the Vision Eugene Comprehensive Plan, as well as the uh, public facilities and service plan. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Howard. Next, we will hear from Kevin Altucker, followed by Mark Rubinowitz. 
Good evening, uh, Lane County Board of Commissioners and City Council of Eugene. Thanks for this opportunity to speak in favor of the proposal. My name is Kevin Altucker. I reside in Eugene Ward 3. Uh, I'm here tonight representing the ES&G Limited Partnership of, uh, I am part of that partnership, and we own five adjacent parcels identified as McKenzie Subarea M1 that are rightly included in the draft urban reserves. And this testimony is to describe those properties and explain why they are well suited for the urban reserves and future annexation into the growing city of Eugene. Uh, Eugene Sand and Gravel, so just to orient you quickly, these are properties where the old Eugene Sand and Gravel plant site was. Uh, Eugene Sand and Gravel previously had ceased mining operations and the properties are being prepared for transition to urban uses. They are adjacent to the city limits on the east side where the Lane County Public Works facility is located. North Delta Road forms the southeast boundary and provides driveway access into the site. The south and southwest edges also abut the city limits. To the west is floodplain and the Willamette River. To the north is the county right of way that can be utilized to serve further uh, future development. And then further north is additional floodplain where a former mining site is being reclaimed. And just to be specific, what we are referring to here are tax lots 300, 1100, 1201, 3901, and 4200 of the tax assessor's map, 1703-1800. The McKenzie subarea M1 is ideal for the urban re uh, reserves for several reasons. It has road front frontage on North Delta Road with convenient access to Beltline. With large public facilities and commercial uses already developed next door and across the road, the extension of public and franchise utilities will be comparatively simple and inexpensive. This minimizes the perennial risk that the city and its taxpayers could be compelled to subsidize urban expansion into the sub area. Urbanization will also create new opportunities for connecting the local population to the Willamette River and the planned trail that will follow the east bank of the river adjacent to this sub area. So in closing, we wholeheartedly support the proposal to include subarea M1 in the urban reserves and urge the Board of Commissioners and City Council to adopt the plan as proposed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Next, we will hear from Mark Rabinowitz, followed by Jessica Marchinski. Yes, good evening. Um, I'm glad the Register Guard had a cover story about this today, which brought a little public attention to this topic, but this is such a large proposal that it deserves much more consideration before moving forward. In particular, the messages from urban reserves have an acknowledgement that we're living on the land of the Kalapuya people, but no acknowledgement that any Kalapuya people were consulted on these plans. So I request that before further actions are taken, that the city and county reach out to the Kalapuya for their input and consent. Um, plans to consider what the region will look like a few decades from now would be welcome if they weren't truncated since mid-century our energy sources that make everything possible will mostly have been exhausted. The Alaska pipeline will be over. The natural gas that provides electricity and heating for the region will be mostly over if not done. And this is not just about personal transportation, it's about food supply. And paving over farmland, creating incentives to destroy agriculture is a sign of a civilization risking collapse. High quality farmland and even medium quality farmland is not common, especially in a volcanic region. And we need to think about relocalization of food as fossil fuels decline and run out. Um, if you really want to think about the future, we could make better efforts to prepare for the Cascadia earthquake. We could consider that the Army Corps 
has released the dam inundation maps that show that downtown Eugene would be under 20 feet of water if Lookout Point were to suffer a breach. And we could think of sustainability as more than just a marketing campaign for the real estate industry, but how we're going to cooperate and thrive as we use up the natural resources that were a one-time gift of nature. None of this is being thought about in the slightest. All societies more complicated than hunter-gatherers are agricultural. And even though most of us are not in the food business, we're all totally dependent on it. And without the thin layer of topsoil, none of us would be here. We would not be having this discussion and all of this would be moot. So I don't think anything that anybody says is gonna change your decision in the slightest. But again, it'd be nice to ask the Kalapuya for their input and to have a real public outreach effort before you rubber stamp this this spring. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Mark. Our next speaker is Jessica Marchinski. Jessica, I don't see you in the attendees list. Please make sure that your name matches what we're seeing in Zoom. The next speaker after Jessica is Joy Cardinal. Joy, I also do not see you in the speaker list. Please take this time to change your name to match the name I have in the list. Those names are Jessica Marchinski and Joy Cardinal. All right, I'm still not seeing those. We can come back to them at the end if I see them. Um, so next I'm going to promote Jennifer Hayward. All right, Jennifer should be a panelist. Here we go. Good evening, counselors and commissioners. My name is Jennifer Hayward, and I'm the Interim Associate Vice President for Facilities Management and Planning at Lane Community College. I also reside in Eugene Ward too. I'm here today to speak in favor of including the Russell Creek sub area in the urban reserve. The Russell Creek sub area encompasses Lane Community College's 153 acre main campus, as well as 181 undeveloped acres owned by the college. LCC is supportive of this ordinance for several reasons. The first reason is that the college operates its own wastewater tre treatment plant and would like to be able to connect to municipal sewer ser services. This connection will allow Lane employees to focus on serving students while leaving the task of large scale wastewater treatment to the regional experts. Additionally, we believe that eventual inclusion in the UGB will allow for better transportation options to the college including a possible MX bus, and it will allow for the potential of services and housing for students to be developed within more convenient distances to the college. Lane students are some of the lower income and more diverse members of our community. They're attending college to make better lives for themselves and their families. Having more frequent buses, better bike and pedestrian routes, Closer housing and more services in the area will allow our busy, low-income students to more easily get the degree that they need. Thank you for your consideration of this testimony. Thank you, Jennifer. Next, we'll hear from Bill Clues. I'm not seeing Bill in the list. Once again, Please make sure that your name in Zoom matches the name you submitted uh, on for the online form. Okay, not seeing a bill clues. Moving on to Tim Hahn. I am not seeing a Tim Hahn in the list. Okay. Next on my list is Mike Reader. Mike, I'm going to go ahead and promote you. Okay, thanks, Mike. You've been transferred over. Go ahead and unmute. Good evening, Board of Commissioners. 
City Council. My name is Mike Reeder. I'm at 375 West 4th Avenue, Suite 205 in Eugene, and I reside in Ward 5. I'm actually here tonight on behalf of two clients. I'm a land use attorney here in Eugene, and I'm representing first uh, Jake Schreffen, and he is an owner of property uh, in the uh, study area, identified as study area Russell Creek Basin, number 18. I've provided testi written testimony to you for your consideration. Uh, in this particular case, my client owns property um, just south of uh, East 30th Avenue, and uh, it's zoned forest, and it's been approved for a single-family dwelling. He is in opposition to having this portion of the Russell Creek study area included in the urban reserves. This portion that should be omitted from the urban reserves is the portion of property in the Russell Creek area that is south of East 30th and west of Gagne Road. This property is uh, highly parcelized. It's our, um, many of those lots are approved for residential. There's some of the property is designated as parks and open space. And there's also some other, uh, uh, there's some steep slopes as well as some other precious lands that should not be included in the urban reserve and in the future urban growth boundary. Um, I've again, I've provided written testimony for you for your consideration, and we ask that the City Council and the Board of Commissioners direct staff that uh, to omit this portion of the Russell Creek sub area from consideration. Staff and the ETAC have done wonderful work. Uh, a lot of heavy lifting has been done for many years, and I've been tracking the work that they've done. I've attended some of the ETAC uh, meetings, and it's just an amazing feat. However, this particular piece of property should be omitted from consideration. And I don't know if now is the time or if I should wait until you're uh, until I come in the queue for my other client, the Dag Trust Partnership. I think I might be uh, might have the opportunity to testify uh, in a couple of minutes, but I can I can testify now if you wish. Thank you. We will not be able to allow you to speak a second time. You will only get one three minute round. So you have 25 okay. seconds remaining if you want to okay. speak regarding well, your other client. Well, I represent two clients. So uh, in any case, I represent the Ag Trust Partnership. I've written testimony in the record on, uh, on behalf of that client. Um, this client, Dag Trust Partnership, uh, has property in West Eugene, and it's we've been following this since before uh, urban reserve planning began. We support it. This property owned by my client should be brought into the urban reserves and future consideration for the urban uh, growth boundary. And we again, we appreciate all the work that staff has done. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Next, we will hear from Sharon Blick, followed by Hope Baker. Uh, you're not letting me start my video. All right, well, my name is Sharon Blick. I've lived at 89030 Fur Butte Road for the past 16 years. This property is now within the urban reserve proposal. And I'm here to tell you that the urban reserve proposal does not meet the requirements for complying with Oregon statewide land use planning goal five regarding wildlife habitat. Specifically, I have evidence that at least eight wildlife species, which have been designated as sensitive species by the ODFW, have been found in the area of the proposed urban reserves, and at least three of these sensitive species breed there. Most of these sensitive species are associated with or dependent on oak woodland habitat, which has already been 97% destroyed in the Willamette Valley. These species and their habitats have not been inventoried as required for compliance with Goal 5. These inventories need to be completed before the land is developed or you will be facing legal action. I'm also here to suggest that you take the same approach to this, to this dilemma that the City of Eugene used back in the early 90s 
when the city was growing west into another endangered habitat, the wet prairie wetland habitat. To much acclaim, Eugene took a bold, innovative, and comprehensive approach to wetland co conservation and development with the West Eugene Wetland Plan. I urge you to uphold Eugene's reputation for foresight and conservation by completing a detailed inventory of all the oak woodlands in the path of development and then determine their value by type, size, connectivity, biodiversity, presence of rare species, and land use history. Then the most valuable oak woodlands can be preserved and restored while allowing the least valuable oak woodlands to be developed. Please see my email for more details. For those who might ask why I didn't make this known earlier in the process, let me tell you that I did bring this up in January 2020, which was a month after we were notified that our land was included in the proposal. Your staff put me off by saying that when the land is brought into the UGB, it will get studied in more detail. But then in your February 15th work session, your staff told you that the urban reserve proposal already contains enough information about the land so that you can bring it into the UGB quickly without doing any more analysis. To comply with goal five, you're gonna to have to do this habitat inventory before any of this land gets developed. So please do the right thing by conducting a comprehensive inventory of all oak woodlands in the proposed urban reserves before deciding which ones will get developed. Thank you, Sharon. Next, we will hear from Hope Baker, followed by Jacqueline Lansing. Hello, my name is Hope Backer. Today, I'll speak on behalf of Landmarch Lane County. The, Landmarch agrees with quite a few of the comments that have already been made regarding the complexity of the proposal. It's um, hard for an average person to understand and follow. Um, we appreciate that staff has put a lot of work into it, that's obvious. Um, however, we still have a few concerns and our concerns are mostly at this point related to questions that we have. First, it doesn't appear that the proposal is designating all lands within the Metro plan boundary as urban reserve before designating lands outside the UGB as such. Um, this is evident in the area that is west of Green Hill and south of Clear Lake um, compared to the area that where land inside the Metro plan boundary isn't proposed to be brought into urban reserves, comparing that to the area south of Green Hill and excuse me, west of Green Hill and south of Royal Avenue, where all that land outside the UGB I mean, all that land inside the Metro plan boundary is being proposed to be brought in. We don't understand the jump over there. Um, we do understand there's a suitability analysis. However, we don't see the suitability analysis addressing necessarily why things were skipped over, but rather addressing why things were chosen. Um, secondly, it doesn't appear that the city's recent middle housing ordinance densities has been considered um, it's understandable to a certain extent why that is, as this process started long before the middle housing pro uh, uh, project and process started. However, the city has to anticipate much higher density and within the UGB um, because of the middle housing, yet the needs analysis seems to show a continuing need for large amounts of acreage of single family residential. So it's kind of conflicting because you want to incentivize this middle housing evidently based on the code language, yet at the same time, you're still expecting large amounts of single family residential. So these are the issues we don't understand. Um, and thank you for your time. 
Thank you, Hope. Next, we will hear from Jacqueline Lansing, followed by Albert LePage. Hi, I am Jacqueline Lansing. I am a current resident on Bloomberg Road across from Black Oak Basin, which is being considered for um, bringing into the Urban Growth Reserve. Um, I would just like to say I um, agree with the, the statements made by Mark, Sharon, and Hope. Um, Bloomberg Road, for example, is right across the street from Black Oak Basin, which will, or where we live at, um, which will be obviously continue to be conservation land, but the area itself around it still does have a large amount of oak trees that are, um, you know, areas for sensitive wildlife species. I also agree with the middle housing density not being considered in this plan. And when we're thinking about, you know, what this plan looks like for the city, I'd ask those who haven't watched the video, Suburbia is subsidized by not just bikes, um, to, to look at that in terms of financially, it's not effective for the city to keep on planning on single housing residential. And, you know, that's part of what kind of goes behind the middle housing density. I also don't think it aligns with the city's goals of continuing to be um, a bikeable city and get anywhere you can get to in your car in 20 minutes, as it's been stated, um, to continue to grow and not focus on higher density housing. Um, I also question if it's in within the city and county's environmental concerns, like others have mentioned, in terms of continuing to cut down trees and agricultural areas to pave over and build single housing homes. Um, like I said, our area, there's a lot of wildlife that depends on the land and in our area, a lot of it is still undeveloped and the few houses on it sit on large areas of property that the animals can still um, enjoy. Um, is it, I also question whether it's within um, the city and county's goals for residents in terms of most people live here because they do wanna partake in nature. If we continue to um, eat up this land, we're not going to have hiking trails that have amounts of you know, nature that we can enjoy. Our area has people coming from town into the Bloomberg Road all the time to enjoy this area. And so putting it up for development has has concerns to me. I think we can still make buses happen out to Lane Community College without destroying more of the environment. As you see from the Lane thir the um, 30th, um, this, the plan for expanding 30th Street already is for you know easier transportation. So I don't think we need to destroy land for that. So between the financial impacts, environmental impacts, I also wanna just mention that we are talking about projected growth over 27 years, but right now, and I know Eugene has continued to see growth, but right now we're also facing economic strife and declining birth rates. So I really do question whether or not this projected growth is true or if it's. Thank you, Jacqueline. Your time has concluded. Next, we will hear from Albert LePage. Albert, go ahead and unmute. Thank you. Commissioners, counselors, I've lived within the urban growth boundary these last seven years and walked far and wide throughout the city. I've seen past development where planning did not include maintaining connections for people and wildlife, both in terms of recreational access for people and wildlife corridor access to reach natural habitats. Without such habitats to support wildlife, urban wildlife essentially becomes homeless. Making sure people have access to parks close to home, and I would also add close to work, are crucial to our health. Therefore, in opening up any urban reserves to future development, to preserve the quality of life, to serve both people and wildlife, there needs to be planning policies developed that preserve areas of high value habitats for wildlife, corridors connecting them, and plan for parks and public recreational access connecting parks too. Therefore, a high priority need is the creation of a recreation parks and wildlife plan specifically for these areas. 
To conclude, with my relevant background in biology, further relevant training and professional experience in trail planning, I will offer my time and energy to the city to make such a plan happen. Albert, it seems that you have finished with your testimony. Next, we will hear from Bill Cluse. Uh, counselors and um, commissioners, I'm Bill Close. I'm, I hope I'm coming through loud and clear. Um, I intended to write a two page letter to you this evening, and then, of course, I submitted a five page letter with some attachments. Um, I really make, uh, at the moment, I'd like to make about five points. The first is that um, anything that's in the urban growth boundary has to be meet the definition of developable land. And the definition of developable land is in an LCDC administrative rule. It means it's it's it's, it's stated in the negative. Um, it it it's, it means land that is quote not severely constrained by natural hazards or designated or zoned to protect natural resources. So you have to be asking the question: What land in the county that we're looking at is uh, planned designated to protect natural resources? I, I think you've got problems with uh, two natural resources. One is wetlands, and the other is big game. With respect to wetlands, you have to you have to you have to figure out what wetlands were designated for protection under Goal Five in the Rural Council Comprehensive Plan. There's a lot of conflict about there about out there about what that list of wet, wetlands is. I've listed the three dominant views at the moment. Uh, one of them's mine. I might be right, I might be wrong, but that has to be figured out. And then the wetlands that are protected as goal five wetlands have to be debited out of your urban reserves. Regardless of which wetlands you consider to be um, protected by the rural county plan, uh, you also have to ask the question, are these wetlands actually going likely to be more probably than not going to be developable? And we all know that it is essentially impossible to develop wetlands uh, um, to any meaningful extent under the state and federal regulations. Uh, the other resource that's out there that's acknowledged as significant for the county is big game range. Um, we have a new decision from Luba where uh, Luba said it's, you know, any big game range needs to be developed only at 40 or 80 acre minimum lot sizes. That's a real problem for you. The county board can fix this. They haven't fixed it yet. Um, the uh, last point I want to make has to do with the need for a parcel specific metro plan diagram. Uh, as best I can tell, the notions about remaining capacity inside the urban growth boundary are based on um, a parcel specific inventory assumption. But that's not what we have in the metro plan. We have a non-parcel specific metro plan. So in order to have a factual basis to support your assumptions about what capacity remains inside the UGB, we need to shift to a parcel specific metro plan. That's a glossy summary. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Next, I'm reviewing the list for speakers that did not appear to be here earlier. I do not see Jessica Marchinsky, Joy Cardinal, or Tim Hahn. So Mayor, that was our final speaker. Okay, thank you very, very much. And uh, thank you to all of you who testified. That was a very informative testimony. So I appreciate the time and energy uh, put into that. And uh, with that, I will ask staff if they have additional comments or information to share. I'll go first and then <clears throat> I can see if uh, our colleague Lindsay has anything to add. I think at this time, I would like to suggest that staff provide follow up to the public comments, both what we've heard tonight and the email comments that we have received so far. Um, 
in a memo that we would like to compile and send to the council and board for you to review prior to your deliberations. Um, but in terms of tonight, because both bodies are needing to adopt identical ordinances, um, we'd also like to request that if counselors or commissioners have specific items or issues that you would like staff to address, please let us know tonight if possible so we can be sure to respond and include that in, um, in our memo for you. Lindsay, do you have anything to add to that? I do not thank you for the opportunity though. Thank you very much. Uh, and we look forward to getting those explanations and we'll we'll do rounds in just a few minutes for questions from counselors and then from commissioners. Um, the Eugene City Council is holding a time on its April 10th, 2023 agenda to deliberate and possibly act on this matter. Uh, the Lane County Board of Commissioners is holding time on its April 11th, 2023 agenda to do the same. The City Council and Board of Commissioners will continue to receive written testimony following the close of the hearing and until action is taken. Your written testimony received by April 10th at 10 a.m. will be forwarded to the City Council and Board of Commissioners prior to those meetings. Instructions for submitting written testimony are provided on the public notice for this meeting and on the Urban Reserves Project page at www.eugene-or.gov slash urban reserves. If you would like to receive future notices about the Eugene Urban Reserves proposal, please provide your name and mailing address with your written testimony. And with that, I now uh, close the City of Eugene's public hearing. You're on mute, Pat. And I'll quit singing. Um, <laughs> uh, Mayor Vanessa, before I close the public hearing, I'd like to correct one omission uh, from previously. When I called on disclosures from the county commission, I called them the four other county commissioners did not call on myself. And I have no conflicts or biases uh, that would uh, prompt a, uh, an abstention. And with that, Mayor Vanessa, uh, I will now close the Lane County public hearing. Okay, um, as noted, uh, separate deliberations and action are being taken by each jurisdiction independently at future dates. The city of Eugene has deliberations and tentative actions scheduled for April 10th, as I said. Uh, thank you for your participation. And uh, let's see, I think I have jumped I over my text. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm like ready to close the meeting and we still have another phase to go through. Good so, night, everybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the problem with scrolling through the text. Okay, so let me back up again and we're back on track. Are there questions for counselors and commissioners? And I will just say what the commissioner for and I are gonna do is uh, alternate a counselor and a commissioner, a counselor and a commissioner. And then when if we have leftover counselors who haven't spoken since there are more of them, we'll catch up at the, catch up at the end. So uh, I am looking for uh, a hand from any city counselors who might wanna be in the queue. And I am seeing none. So I'll turn it over to you, Commissioner Farr. And I will do the same. Any uh, um, members of the Board of County Commissioners to uh, ask questions or make comments, I'll call on uh, Vice Chair Trigger. Thank you, Chair. Just procedurally, do we need a motion um, to roll this onto our April 11 meeting? And if so, I'm prepared to make one at the appropriate time. Thank you. And thank you, Vice Chair Trigger. I think that will come uh, uh, post uh, Mayor Vinnis, um, Mayor Vinnis's, uh <laughs> previously started, soon to be finished, uh, <laughs> closure. <laughs> Got it, okay, thank you. And Mayor Venice, I see no other hands from uh, commissioners. Uh, it looks like you've got Commissioner Lovell there. And you know, there you go, I see that up there now. I have, I have a tiny iPad, um, Commissioner Lovell. Are you singing, David? You're muted. <laughs> Unmute. Oh, there we go. I was singing a song to myself. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, my only comment, just as reading through the, the vast amount of material that was supplied to us, and thank you for all those people who sent that. I was going to read War and Peace this weekend, but I changed my mind, uh, is just the uh, 
the real question for me in my developer mind is when I ask these questions about what people are saying and what I've been reading is, you know, we're trying to make a 27 year supply of land, but realistically, how much is developable? And then we have to ask the second question, how much of what is developable is going to cost us more if we have to mitigate wetland, big game overlays, concern, litigation, LUBA, and all those kinds of things. So those are just the things that I still need answered in my mind that I think are still yet to be answered. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lovell. Any further, uh, back to you, Mayor of Venice. I am not seeing any counselors with hands raised and we do have a work session. So I'm imagining they're saving up their concerns for that time. I suspect we're in the same, uh, the same boat. So Mayor Venice, at this point in time, I will uh, ask for a motion, Vice Chair Trigger. Thank you, Chair. Uh, here we are. I move to approve the second reading and set a third reading and deliberations on April 11, 2023 at 1 30 p.m. for the Board of County Commissioners. Second that. Moved by Vice Chair Trigger and seconded by David Lovell. A motion to approve the second reading and set a third reading on April 11, 2023. 2023 at 1 30 p.m. Any discussion to the motion? I'm seeing none and I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, if any, passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, now I really mean it this time. <laughs> As noted, uh, separate deliberations and actions are being taken by each jurisdiction independently at future dates. The city of Eugene has uh, deliberations and tentative action scheduled for April 10th, 2023. And with that, thank you all for your participation. And our city council meeting is closed. And Lane County has deliberations and tentative action scheduled for April 11th, 2023. Thank you for your participation tonight. And the meeting is closed. Adieu. <laughs>